How do and welcome back to Morrigan's Creations and this week we're working on a project that I've had in my head for well since Leviathan came out so what I want to do is I want to take this Ballistus Dreadnought and have an undead space marine coming out the inside so first we're going to take this thing apart and this is where I want the space marine to be just inside this little area here but in order to do this we're going to need our undead space marine so i'm going to use this arm piece from i think it's the soul blight grave lord start collecting box i'm just going to cut off the arm just on the side and we're going to use our hobby knife which in this case mine is dull so we're going to need to replace that with a brand new piece so size 11 always have spares of them That's just going to be put in there, screwed back in, and what you're going to want to remember to do is safely dispose of your old blades. To do that, I wrap it up in tape, just so there's not really much of a chance of somebody stabbing themselves on it, and I put it in an aluminium can. So what we're going to do is we're going to scrape away and cut away any of the bits left over from that arm, just to make it blend in with the rest of the sculpt. Next thing we want to do is remove any of those mold lines we found across this piece. I do actually end up swapping out this head, but it is still good practice to get rid of any of the mold lines. Now I have this arm from the same kit, from the start collecting kit, and it has got a few details that we don't want. So we're going to come in with our clippers again and remove any of those details before coming in again with our knife just to get rid of any of that excess material. Now we're going to want to trim down this guy's nails. The issue with these sculpts are the nails are ridiculously long as they are meant to be undead, they're meant to be some kind of weird demon things. And I want this to look a little bit more human so I came in and I cut that down. Next I'm going to want to come in with some plastic cement and I'm going to stick that arm in a position that makes it look like he's reaching out. Now I think it's time to tackle the main hull of this dreadnought. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making a line just with this saw before coming in once again with the knife and I'm going to slowly be scoring away until I get all the way through the plastic. This did take some time if you're going to be doing this expect to take about 15 minutes unless of course you're an absolute master with a knife and you get through it much quicker. So I finish this off and I do have to come in and clean off any of the extra bits that are sticking out. You're going to see them here as it just comes off now. So I just want to blend this in a little bit, cut down any of the extra material and scrape it flat. To scrape it away I am using the back of the knife, just the blunt area, and that's just going to help scrape away any of that unwanted material without causing too much damage. Now we're going to try and figure out our placement for our undead space marine. And yeah, I'm quite happy with how it's looking. So I decided to cut out a little bit of plastic card. This is from a Pets at Home voucher, I think. And I just cut that down and stuck that to the inside so that we've got something to adhere to. And as you can see, this main shell over the top is gonna to cover a lot of that dead space, pun intended. But there is still gonna be some space that we're gonna to have to fill in. So I came in with some of my beads I did used to do a bit of scratch building here and there, so I have amassed a fair few beads, so I've got these little plastic bits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making some little tiny holes, make some little pilot bits with my knife. Before attaching the beads with a little bit of that plastic glue. I do actually reinforce this with a bit of super glue as well, but we're going to do the same on the back of the hull. So going to start off with the knife before moving in with the drill bit and that's just going to extend and widen those holes allowing us to thread through a little bit of wire. A 
luckily for me the inner diameter of the beads that I used are about the same size as the thickness of the wire that I used. Once again I was a scratch builder so I amassed a fair few wires from taking things apart. If you go in the back catalogue you'll probably find some of them on there. But we're just going to thread them through the holes and we're going to do a bit of plastic glue just to make sure that he's fixed in place nice and snug. We did lose a wire so I had to come back in with a bit of super glue and a different wire and that's just going to make sure everything like I say nice and snug and in a place that makes sense. Before we close up this thing we're going to want to reinforce a little bit of super glue just on the back to make sure that those wires aren't going to slip out of there. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to use a bit of sprue goo, a bit thin on this bit and me being me I sealed it all shut and then realised that I hadn't attached the legs. So I did have to come in, break it apart again, and once I'd attached the legs, seal it right back up. Now I did actually forget to mention at the start of the video, but this is going to be my first sort of delve into the world of Grimdark. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I like to paint stuff quite bright, quite colourful. And I quite like the look of some of these Grimdark things, so... I thought I'd give it a go with this model. Right here I am using Martian Iron Earth and that is a crackle paint so that's going to help split and that's going to make it look like this paint has started to chip away. Now I'm working on the base. Not going too complex with this as I want the main focus to be the Dreadnought itself. So this is a texture paste from Vallejo. I did start out by applying it with a spatula. I think that's what they're called, artist spatulas. But as I got into a bit more of the fiddly areas, I moved on to just a cheap brush. As always, I came in with a little bit of gravel as well, using that bit sparingly on the front and the back of the model. These are going to act as the large stones. And then I'm just going to come in with a little bit of sand, mixed grit sand. And that's what I used on the Raikonur model. If you haven't seen that video, go check that out. But once again, I'm trying to use this a little bit sparingly, as I want that texture paste to shine through. Making a few more bullet holes here. Much in the same way as I made the holes in the back of that plastic card. Right now I'm using Typhus Corrosion, which is a Citadel texture paint. You'll notice that I am painting this over some of the areas where I've already put some of that Martian Iron Earth. I just want there to be a wide variety of textures on this model. Don't want it to all look too samey. And when it does come time to painting, it's going to really lend to using that streaking grime. Now I'm going to take you a bit back in time to when you were a kid. I've mixed up a little batch of watered down PVA glue. And instead of using paper mache, I'm going to use roots that I've collected from the garden. I'm going to dip those in and I'm going to attach them to the model directly. I could have come in and used super glue, but I felt that would be, I would say a bit too messy, but this was quite messy too. But I quite like the working time of using the PVA. So the roots are really going to absorb that water in PVA and they're going to hold their shape. It does take a little bit of fiddling here and there, but once you get there, it looks really good. At first I wasn't entirely sure about whether using the roots would be a good idea, but I am really glad that I did, as I wanted this thing to seem like it's been in the ground for a bit, and the Space Marine is obviously trying to get his way out, he's been stuck in this thing for god knows how long, and nature has started to reclaim the Dreadnought, and he's not ready. There are actually a few different narratives that I was thinking about as I was going through this, a space marine obviously trapped inside the dreadnought wanting to escape knowing that he signed up to be put in this thing and that he will spend eternity until it's destroyed that's how long he'll be in there and i'm going to go into a little bit more detail about the ideas and if you have any of your own ideas i'd love for you to let me know in the comments i'm just going to go through and add a few finishing details to the base and get ready to prime And here he is. 
I'm really happy with how he's looking so far. Can't wait to get that primer on there as it's going to draw it all together. Mark, I think most of them have gone. This video is getting pretty long. As your editor I think we should end the video here and paint this model in next week's video. If they subscribe and hit the bell icon they will be notified whenever you upload. Just saying. Yeah, I think you might actually be right there. So, I think we will finish it here and next week we're going to get painting this thing. So if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next week.